In this lesson, we're going to take a look at an asymmetric pair of operators, star and star equal, for the fraction class. So we're going to go through a code trace. Here, in main, we've declared three fractions. F, I want to initialize to a half. G, I want to initialize to three quarters. And H, I want to be a default fraction. So let's see what functions are called and how the parameters are assigned the arguments or the operands that are sent. We're going to create H. Now since H I've passed nothing to, there are no arguments passed to it, that means it's going to call the default constructor. So what happens? Numerator is set to 0, denominator is set to 1, and we have completed the construction. H is now constructed. Now we start to construct G it calls the appropriate constructor. And remember that the compiler will call the constructors automatically. So it calls the constructor that will accept two arguments. We set the numerator to 3, the denominator to 4. Check to make sure the denominator is not 0, and G is constructed. Then we're going to construct F. We're going to pass 1 and 2 to numerator and denominator for the constructor that takes two integers. So numerator set to 1, denominator to 2. We check to make sure the denominator is not 0, and f is constructed. Now let's take a look at the second line where we set h to be assigned the value of f times g through the star operator. So what happens? We call the operator star function. Let's see how the assignment is made. f is going to be left-hand side. g is going to be right-hand side. So as you see, f in main and left hand side in operator star is this object here. Likewise this object is g and right hand side in operator star. What happens? Very first line of code we create a fraction local to the operator definition. We call it result and we're going to call the copy constructor. So the first thing is a call to the copy constructor where result is the calling object left-hand side is what is going to be passed into source. We're going to copy source's numerator into the numerator of the calling object and source's denominator into the denominator of the calling object. It completes that call and so result has been created and initialized. Now I'm going to have result call the star equal operator and return that value which means I'm going to return result after it has been changed. We have a call to the star operator function and right hand side is going to be passed into that parameter which is the right hand side for the star equal operator and result is what? It's the calling object. It is star this. The numerator for the calling object is replaced by it times the numerator of the right hand side operand. Likewise with the denominator it gets changed and I'm going to return the calling object. Now at this point result has been changed. It is now the left hand side times the right hand side and that is what is returned to the fraction f times g and that gets assigned to h. Let's go over this line of code. What I'm going to do is chain the star equal operator. And to foreshadow what happens, this part of it gets done first. That is, g is going to re be replaced by g times h. And then f is going to be replaced by f times g. We have a call first to the star equal operator with h being passed into the right hand side and g being the calling object. The numerator of g is multiplied in by the numerator of h. Likewise with the denominator of g it's multiplied in by the denominator of h. We're going to return the calling object which in this case is g. So the return of this operation is g. But g has been changed so it's the new g. Now we're going to call star equals, but this time g is going to be the right hand side and f is going to be the calling object. 
the numerator of f is now multiplied in by the numerator of g and the denominator of f is multiplied in by the denominator of g and I'm going to return the calling object which is f. I return and what's happened? Well h has not changed, g has changed, and f has changed. And we'll next look at a symmetric pair and see how we might define is equals and not equals.